Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to touch about the magnetically coupled circuits, the self-inductance and the neutron. So basically the goal for um, this lecture is magnetically coupled circuits and the self-inductance and the mutual inductance. All right, so as a definition for magnetically coupled circuits, we can say that when two loops with or without contacts between them affect each other through the magnetic field generated by one of them, they are said to be magnetically coupled. So for example, if we have this circuit, So we're going to have different elements, different electrical elements with uh, these two sides. But for now, um, I'm just talking about this uh, magnetic field in between. So we said that these two loops can affect each other through the magnetic field generated by one of them. And then that these um, two loops are called to be magnetically coupled. So one of the important definitions in um, magnetic circuits <coughs> is the magnetic flux. So let's see what is the magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux is the number of magnetic field lines through a closed set. Um, closed circuit such as coil. So let's see what does this um, definition mean. So basically, if we have this circuit here that I have a current source, I of t, and I have a coil, which is our inductor, okay? And then we're going to have a voltage across this inductor. So in the definition of the flux, we said that the magnetic field line passing through a closed surface such as coil. So this current here, I of t will pass through the inductor, the coil, and will generate some magnetic field here. And these magnetic fields are called the magnetic flux. Okay, so this magnetic flux and the current passing through the inductor and also the number of turns inside the inductor, inside this coil, can be used in order to write the definition for the inductor. So, I mean the definition for the inductance. So the inductance is equal to n d phi over dr. So as we said, the inductance depends on number of turns multiplied by the change in the flux with respect to the change to the current. Okay, so let's see what does that mean, what do we mean by um, the number of turns. So basically here we have a coil which is the base of our inductor and then we're going to have this winding bounded around this coil. Okay, so this is the structure of the inductor. So the number of turns means the number of times this winding is wounded around the inductor. Okay? All right. So this was the magnetic flux and also the definition of the inductance. And by the way, since we only have one inductor here, okay, and we have one uh, a phi 
being generated by I and it is inside L so this inductor is it, this inductance is called the self inductor so it doesn't have any effect on anything else right now because we do not have anything else in this circuit so here now we will go ahead and talk about the mutual inductance which is another important fact in magnetic field that we should know so the mutual inductance so as a definition for mutual inductance we can say that when two inductors are close to each other so basically close enough to each other the magnetic flux caused by the current in one of the coils linked with the other coil and that will induce a voltage in the second coil so this phenomenon is called the mutual inductance so let's see what I just um, said in the circuit so just consider this circuit so we said that if we have two inductors close enough to each other okay So L2 and 1 and I1. Okay, so we said that when two inductors are close enough to each other, so they're close enough to each other, the magnetic flux caused by the current in one coil, so we said that when we have a time change in current passing through an inductor, it will generate a magnetic flux right so we said that the magnetic flux the flux caused by the current in one coil linked with the other coil so this is the flux from coil 1 that is linked with coil 2 and this is the flux in coil 1 linked with coil 1 so inside coil 1 that flux which is caused by current I1 will induce a voltage across L2 okay and this phenomenon is called the mutual inductance okay so let's see mathematically how we can um, derive these equations here for uh, the mutual inductance so first let's just write real quick the Faraday's law So we know that the Faraday's law will say that the voltage induced in the coil is proportional to the number of turns and the time rate of change of magnetic flux. So with Faraday, Faraday's law, we have V equal to N V phi over dt. All right. And as you saw here, the definition for inductor was N V phi over dr right so if I can just write this as n d phi over di multiplied by di over dt okay and you can easily see that this is the definition of inductance okay so from here we can say that v is equal to l di over dt so what is this this is the definition of the voltage across the inductor right as we had before so we have v equal to n d phi over dt this was from the faraday's law just keep this in mind and now that we want to find um, the mutual inductance okay we will assume we have the same circuit that we were working with in the definition of the mutual inductance so we had this coil here we had i1 passing through <coughs> coil 1 so l1 and we had i1 of t had positive and negative v1 and then we had l2 Just for simplicity, for the circuit, 
we will assume I2 equal to 0. So we do not have any current passing through L2. But we can say that V2 is also equal to 0 because we still have another inductor close enough to L2 that can induce a voltage across L2. Okay? So with this voltage, with the calculations of this voltage, we can find out the mutual inductance between L1 and L2. So you remember that we said when we have an inductor and a time change in current, these are a little <laughs> far enough from each other, but they should be closer. So we said that we have phi 1, 2, and we have phi 1, 1. Okay, so we can say that the total phi inside coil 1 is equal to phi 1, 1 plus phi 1, 2, right? And let's see what is um, the value for each of these voltages. So V1 with Faraday's law is equal to N1 D phi 1 over DT. And I can write this as N d phi 1 over d i 1 multiplied by d i 1 over d t. Okay, and we had this as a definition of inductance in coil 1. So we can say that V1 is equal to L1 d i 1 over d t, as we expect, right? So let's see what is the value for V2. If I want to use Faraday's law, V2 is equal to N2 D phi over DT, but what is this phi? This phi is the flux inside coil 2. What is the flux inside coil 2? The only flux that we have here is phi 1, 2, which is the flux coming from L1. Okay, so flux phi 1, 2. So I can do the same um, process. So N1 D phi 1, 2 over DI1. Why DI1? Because I1 is the current that is um, generating phi 1, 2. Okay? Multiplied by DI1 over DT. So here I'm going to have some inductance multiplied by di1 over dt. Why I said some inductance? Because I had n and the change of phi with respect to the change of i. But this inductance is not anymore L. It's called M. Okay? And in this case, it is N2. Sorry, N21. Okay, so this is called the mutual inductance. So M21 is the mutual inductance of coil 1 with respect to coil 2. Okay? It means that it relates the voltage in coil 2 to the current in coil 1. Why? Because there was a current in coil 1 that generates flux phi 2, 1 and then induce a voltage in coil 2, which is V2. Okay? So this was the definition for the mutual inductance M21. So if we do the same process, and this time consider I1 equal to 0, we can find, so if we have I1 equal to 0, and we do the same process as we just did, we will get M12 equal to M N1 D5 2 1 over Di2. This means that we have a mutual inductance that is relating voltage in coil 1 to the current in coil 2. So there was a current in coil 2 that induced a voltage in coil 1. So in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about um, how we can solve for the circuits with mutual inductances and the dot convention method.